keep this there it will be where it will be safe today. Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. It has been a busy week, starting with AMD launching Fidelity FX Super Resolution Tuesday, Microsoft announcing Windows 11 Thursday, and Kyle, aka Bitwit, and I hosting the most noteworthy event of the week on Saturday, our charity live stream, where there was much merrymaking and frivolity, libations, of course, video gaming, and fundraising, which was the whole point of the thing. Thanks to our generous viewers, we raised over this much money for the children, specifically the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles via Extra Life. I drink to your affluence and generosity, my friends. Uh, just water this morning, though. Still some bad memories from last week, and, uh, you know, yesterday was a long day. Cheers. Excellent! Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120mm air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120mm fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. AMD launched Fidelity FX Super Resolution Tuesday, which uses a spatial upscaling algorithm to boost frame rates in games by rendering them at a lower resolution than upscaling for a minimal impact on visual quality. Reviews went up at the same time, and the TLDR is that FSR has been well received. While the performance and balanced modes lead to a bit too much visual degradation for most gamers, quality and ultra quality come much closer to matching the native resolution without suffering from artifacts or other inconsistencies, especially at 4K, where there can be a 40 to 70% uplift in frame rates. It's worthwhile to run at 1440p as well, where you can get 20 to 40% more frames with the ultra quality setting, but the downside for now is limited games that support it with only seven titles integrating FSR at launch. Compared to Nvidia's DLSS 1.0, the FSR feedback is overwhelmingly positive, but since DLSS uses AI and temporal data as well, version 2.0 does produce a better overall visual result. But FSR does come close, and DLSS hardware requirements are more strict, particularly lacking support for older GPUs, which a lot of gamers are kind of stuck with for the time being. So if AMD's goal is to create a new standard based around FSR that's ubiquitous across all 3D gaming platforms, they're starting off on the right foot. Hopefully the positive reception will encourage more adoption in upcoming and existing game titles, because hey, it's a free performance upgrade. But hold on there, AMD. Before you ride this wave of positive FSR feedback too far, don't think we didn't notice what you slipped in at the same time with this week's Radeon Adrenaline 21.6.1 driver. It enables FSR in games that support it, sure, but it also moves a bunch of not really that old Radeon GPUs to legacy support mode, meaning no additional driver releases are planned to support these graphics products. So new games won't be optimized and game-breaking glitches could go unresolved for this set of GPUs, which includes cards like the R9 Fury, which just launched six years ago in 2015, as well as the Radeon 200 series, the Radeon 300 series, and the older Radeon HD cards, including 8500 through 8900 series models. Mobile GPUs and APUs are also on the cut list, so check the article linked in the description if you're running older silicon from Team Red and think you might be affected. While it's understandable that AMD can't support every card they've ever sold indefinitely, the timing for this announcement is very bad considering the current GPU market, and it does seem like they were hoping the FSR hype would draw attention away from it. But who knows? AMD has reversed course in the past due to public outcry, as recently as with the promised support for the 400 series chipsets and Zen 3 CPUs, so maybe if there are enough miffed R9 390 users out there, they'll extend support a bit further. Sound off to AMD on their social media accounts if that includes you. Windows 11 is a thing. Microsoft has officially announced it, and it will launch as a free upgrade for Windows 10 users by holiday 2021, with a test build for Windows Insiders available next week. There's a lot to be said about Microsoft's latest version of their operating system, so I'll just go over the things that I found most notable, starting with some high-level comments that CEO Satya Nadella made towards the end of the announcement about what Windows stands for. The web itself was born and grew up on Windows. It's driven silicon innovation and device innovation. It's enabled so many people including hobbyists, students, developers, and entrepreneurs to all dream big, turn their ideas into reality, and monetize their creation. Windows has always stood for sovereignty for creators and agency for consumers. 
sovereignty for creators and agency for consumers. This could easily be brushed off as carefully manicured, legally approved corporate pandering, but I appreciate Microsoft recognizing that operating systems, whether designed by Google, Apple, Microsoft, or someone else, have a lot of potential for abuse and misuse when it comes to data collection and consumer privacy. Operating systems should mold to our needs, not the other way around is a compelling statement and reflects a growing awareness amongst users that our thoughts and our time are often monopolized and manipulated by AI-powered algorithms designed to hold our attention and maximize ad revenue at the expense of everything else. I sincerely hope that Mr. Nadella encourages this design philosophy with future versions of Windows. I think that myself and a lot of us would appreciate it. Beyond that though, Summing up the Windows 11 announcement isn't too difficult. There was a lot of time spent on showing UI updates, rounded corners, glassy looking windows and icons and stuff. Not bad, I don't mind a UI refresh. Functionally though, I like the Windows snapping features that they've enhanced by allowing you to quickly arrange your desktop layout with multiple apps running. And in particular, I'm interested in the grouping feature that puts Windows back where they were after resuming a task. I set up Windows all the time for screen grabs, live streaming, stuff like I'm doing right now, and this will save me time. It also works for laptops, so if you undock and then reconnect to a secondary monitor, the window positions are remembered and go right back to where they were. Android app support is also a great addition, although there is an in-between step since they're accessed via the Microsoft Store via the Amazon App Store. So an Amazon login is required, but once that's handled, you can use Android apps natively, pin them to your taskbar or do whatever you want with them. There was a concern about platform support since this is powered by a new Intel Bridge compiler, but Intel has since clarified that it will work with x86 based processors, which means AMD CPUs too, as well as support for ARM based chips. Finally, Intel has released a utility to check if your system supports Windows 11 on the hardware level, and many PC users are actually failing the check. The reason is many PCs do not have TPM 2.0 support or Trusted Platform Module 2.0, which is a security coprocessor often used in business machines that Microsoft is requiring for Windows 11. This is particularly irksome for DIY builders, but there is a way out. For older motherboards with a TPM header, a TPM 2.0 device can be purchased and added in. For most boards manufactured in the past five years though, you probably already have support, but it might not be enabled. A TPM module can be emulated in firmware, so a physical one is not always required. And uh, thanks to Jerry, AKA Barnacles and Nergasm, and his friend Eric Hobbs, who have been helping folks out with this on Twitter. It's called PTT on Intel boards and FTPM on AMD boards, says Eric. So see if you can flip that setting in your UEFI to enable support, or check this Twitter thread for a few more possible tips. Thanks to Eric and Jerry. It's a good thing too, since TPM module prices have spiked a bit since yesterday. According to Shen Yi on Twitter, they've gone from about 25 bucks up to 100, although I have found some others that are still available for more like 20 to 30. But you know what? If scalpers move to TPM modules and away from GPUs, I think I'm okay with it. And one more late addition to this story published Monday morning, according to Dwizzle from Microsoft, they have already updated the tool to show you specifically what the issue is, whether it's a TPM 2.0 module missing, you don't have enough disk space, your CPU doesn't meet the requirements, or you have to have secure boot, which is all requirements for Windows 11. Speaking of GPUs though, there's more good news this week on the video card supply front, as Chinese website IT Home reports that they expect a significant increase of second revision RTX 3060 supply by the end of the month. Those are the hash rate limited cards too, which are less appealing for crypto miners out there. As reported by videocards.com, internet cafes in China will get first dibs on these new cards and can place deposits now, with shipments ramping up starting July 10th. That's great news for internet cafes in China that have suffered during the pandemic, but if you're not a Chinese internet cafe owner, you can still take solace in the fact that there will be more gaming GPU stock in general that should also ease demand somewhat in general, and will hopefully contribute to the continuing downward trend in global CPU prices. Bitcoin has had a rough week, which could also be good news for GPU prices as the premier crypto dropped below 30K briefly on Tuesday, which could be the result of more news from China. Mining facilities in the Sichuan province received an order on Friday the 18th to stop doing business by Sunday, one week ago, according to Chinese state media outlet, The Global Times. Electric companies were directed to stop supplying electricity to known crypto mining organizations and videos of large scale mining setups being manually shut down percolated on the social medias throughout the week. That hardware still looks useful though, right? Unfortunately, rather than selling off GPUs to hungry gamers, for the Ethereum setups at least, at least a few of these operations are simply relocating to the land of opportunity, the United States. Hooray! 
The South China Morning Post reports that Fenghua International Transportation, a logistics company that ships stuff like chili sauce around the world, is preparing to airlift three metric tons of Bitcoin mining equipment to the US, where it will totally only be set up to run on clean, renewable energy, they promise. And now it's time for Tech Briefs, where I use the latest machine learning algorithms to somehow shovel news into your brain even more efficiently. Everyone is tired of overpriced graphics cards, which is why I won't spend too much time on this overpriced graphics card, Colorful's limited edition RTX 3090 Kudan. Kudan? Kudan? Which costs $5,000 and features a 500 watt Swiss made hybrid liquid air cooled heatsink, as well as an OLED display and detachable 240 millimeter radiator. Only 1,000 of these most premium graphics cards in existence will be made, which I'm told will roughly double the global GPU supply. John McAfee, one time antivirus software magnate turned the uh, very interesting person, was found dead in a prison cell in Barcelona, Spain on Wednesday. McAfee was 75 and his extradition to the US to face fraud, tax evasion, and money laundering charges had just been arranged. While he parted ways with his antivirus company long ago, his reputation as a man of peculiar tastes and proclivities has grown in the past 10 plus years, as reports of him hiring a hitman to whack his neighbor, being arrested on a yacht packed with high caliber weapons and military equipment, or his intricate knowledge of cetacean mating habits have only added to his legendary status. Rest in peace, John. Thanks for making the world a more interesting place. Last week, U.S. Senators proposed a 25% tax credit for investments in semiconductor manufacturing in another move to bolster the industry and encourage development of U.S.-based fabs. While some note that tech companies are already quite profitable, maintaining a competitive edge with manufacturers like TSMC almost requires government subsidies, as fabs in Taiwan, China, and elsewhere are already heavily backed by government funds, which account for up to 70% of manufacturing and development costs. Motivations include economic reasons, as new fabs would create new jobs, and national security concerns due to growing mistrust in foreign silicon. WD MyBook Live users suffered a rude awakening Thursday as mass incidents of disk wiping were reported on the WD support forums. Directories were left intact, but the data was wiped after a remote factory reset was triggered. Users are understandably upset as some have lost years of work, and the fact that the remote command execution vulnerability in these devices that is the apparent culprit was reported as far back as 2018 isn't helping. WD for now hasn't been able to provide any assistance beyond advising customers to unplug their WD MyBook Live devices from the internet and possibly rename them to WD MyBook Dead. ITV News in the UK has reported on disturbing footage of what is apparently common practice in Amazon facilities, destroying perfectly good consumer merchandise in the name of maintaining high sale prices and preventing those goods from being resold on the secondary market. This allegedly happens to about 130,000 items a week at just this one warehouse, including drones, headphones, and jewelry, which are placed into boxes labeled destroy and then taken to landfill sites or recycling centers. British lawmakers, presumably in their funny powdered wigs will be furrowing their brows and issuing strongly worded statements before moving on to other things. Meanwhile, in the souls of the people, the grapes of wrath are filling and growing heavy, growing heavy for the vintage. What a dramatic ending. I should work in more Steinbeck quotes, but there you have it guys, tech news for the week. Your feedback of course is always welcome, so please feel free to leave a comment down below. While you're down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading and you can also click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options. Not this shirt, this is a level one tech shirt, but uh, way to go Wendell. And subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.